Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Today I have a brand new Backman Thomas and Friends character, only just been released, I've managed to get one and today we're going to be taking a look. It has been quite a long time since Backman have released a new character into their Thomas and Friends range, but it does seem as though that is still something they're looking to do, and today I do have a brand new one. So today's new character is this. It is Daisy the DMU. And this is a unique character for Backman, isn't it? It's the first diesel that runs on bogies. Those are those trucks with four wheels on them, meaning that at least mechanically, this should be completely different to any of the other Backman characters, which is really interesting. The other good thing to notice is that this is still in the old model style. It doesn't seem like Backman are updating their models to match the new 2D animation style. And I've got to get this off my chest. What? What? Are the creators of that show thinking in changing the characters to 2D animated ones? Surely a child's love of trains stems from their tangible physicality, their existence in the real world. I feel like that's why the original model series was so successful. Changing the characters to wildly unrealistic two-dimensional ones that literally defy the laws of physics in front of you seems like the opposite they should have done. Uh, sorry, yeah, I've got to say that. But anyway, this has not been done in that style and I think it's much better for it. One question I have had though to myself is, who are Backman aiming this model at? I mean, the obvious answer is kids. I mean, this is gonna appeal to a kid, no doubt. But I tend to find that it seems adult collectors are more interested in this sort of thing. A lot of the comments I get on these videos are from adults. And the other big factor in this is, of course, price. Because the RRP, Backman's RRP for this model, is incredibly expensive. It is $163. Now, let me be honest with you, if I cast my mind back to when I was a kid, I could not have bought this. I used to get one pound pocket money a week. I would never have had the patience to save for over two years to buy this, never. Fortunately though, the retailer discount is very generous, it seems, on this loco, much more than the 10 to 15% that we usually see. For instance, over in the US, Trainworld have these for around $100, which is obviously much better, I think, definitely. And I bought mine from Tootley Thomas, of course, had to be imported from the States, for £90, which is about $118. So I think it's definitely better, isn't it? The thing is though, thinking about it from a kid's point of view, for that money you could buy, what, at least three really good video games, okay? And in terms of sheer entertainment value, you can get tens of hours of entertainment out of one of those. They can take you to places you could never normally go, you can do things you can never normally do. Realistically, what is a child going to pick? If it was me, I would pick the video games. It's not what a child should pick. I think, you know, you get a lot more educational value out of this. You'll learn a lot more about physics and electronics with this. But in terms of what a kid will actually pick, I think it's going to be the video games. So that's another reason why I think this is probably more for adult collectors. But it doesn't really matter if you are an adult collector. We'll find out whether this is going to be any good for you. And also if you've got kids and you like them, I mean a hell of a lot, then yeah, we'll find out whether this is suitable for them. It's got to be absolutely bulletproof, of course. This is not a disposable toy at that sort of price. It's got to stand the test of time. So let's take a close look at this, find out what it's like. So, just in case you are new to this, one thing that the packaging here astoundingly does not mention is that these models are designed for an HO or 00 standard gauge model railway and they pick up power from the tracks. So these do not take batteries, you can't use them as standalone models if you don't have some sort of track and power system to put them on. I guess you would assume that these run on batteries, but no, you do actually have to run them on a powered model railway. Anyway, there is Daisy inside the packaging, really interested to see how Backman have created this, how is the mechanism arranged, what sort of specs are we dealing with, can't wait to see this thing. 
First though, let me show you the back of the box. You can see some of the other characters that Backman produce. I have reviews on all of these, I believe, except for Percy, so check those out if you like. And then on the end there, there's a list of the different characters available. And here's an interesting one. Daisy's eyes move side to side. Yes, the creepy and ubiquitous eye-moving feature on the Backman Thomas range is included on this model. So uh, yeah, if you're easily freaked out, then you'll enjoy the performance section, won't you? Anyway, for the first time ever, I'm going to get this out. Uh, disappointingly, Backman haven't changed the packaging. Again, if you're gonna spend $100 or more on a model like this, it would be nice to have a box you can put it in to protect it a little bit. Instead, you've got this disposable uh, blister pack. But it is sort of preservable if you're careful with opening it. I'm gonna try and do that now with Rusty. Come on, Rusty. Always cut away from you, kids. <laughs> And uh, if you are a kid, obviously you should be letting an adult do this bit. Or just use some scissors. It's a bit safer, isn't it? Right, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick finger count, and then we'll get this thing open. Yes, I've still got all my fingers, so we can move on. So first of all, let's see what sort of documentation we get. Let's get the fun bit over with first. So, instructions. Breaking period then, so we've got to break Daisy in. Was she a horse or something? Well, it just says it will work best after a few hours of actual running time. So, yeah, that's fine. Smoke unit, I don't think that applies. Hopefully this loco won't smoke. And a little bit of info about lubrication and maintenance. I suppose the real interesting part is on the back here. So how is this loco arranged? So looking at this diagram, it looks a little bit like there are two sets of gears in there. So does that mean that both of the bogies are powered? Are all of the wheels on the model going to be driven? If so, that is great. Yeah, I think that's exactly what you should sort of expect here. Anyway, yeah, it looks like a fairly standard setup. It seems as though the motor is centrally mounted and it looks as though it's got a fairly chunky flywheel on it as well, which is uh, pretty unusual. I can't remember if any of the other Thomas and Friends locos have had flywheels, so that's uh, gonna be exciting. I look forward to seeing it. Anyway, let's see if we can get this lovely daisy out then. Here we go. Ah, damn coming out of the tray a little bit there. Okay. All right, so she's packaged reasonably well, and I guess this is a little bit like a permanent piece of packaging, isn't it? You could actually put her in here and keep her in this thing because it's got a cover over it. So actually, yeah, I think that's pretty decent. I think a proper box would still have been nicer, but yeah, it's an improvement, isn't it? Right, let's have a feel. <laughs> Sorry, Daisy, this is a bit like a doctor's examination, except I'm not a doctor, worrying, I know. Anyway, yeah, the weight seems pretty good. Yeah, seems to be a very substantial model, which is good news, it's good news. Right, let's try and carefully get this out then, and let's take our first look. All right, so this looks pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, it's very definitely Daisy, that's for sure. And we will take a closer look a little bit later on and see how accurate this is. First though, let's take a look mechanically. Uh, no, we haven't got all wheels driven. Weirdly, very weirdly, it is the rear bogey that is driven, and the front bogey, where the eye mechanism is, is not driven. I would have expected it all to be at one end, but clearly it isn't. So all of the gears and such at the front are just for the eye mechanism, and all of the driving goes on at the back. They still haven't fitted traction tyres though, which is decent. And actually, this is very, very heavy, quite back heavy, actually, noticeably. So I do suspect that this will be a decent hauler as well. It should have some good pulling power. Anyway, we'll take a closer look at this in a second. First though, here's a bit of history on Daisy in real life over on Sodor. Daisy arrived on Sodor in 1960, having been purpose-built for the Farquhar branch line. She is quite a stern and lofty character. She's known for her authority, confidence, and sometimes even arrogance. She did have quite a rocky start on the island as she was very lazy and unfriendly to start with, particularly with the other engines. But after some words with the fat controller, she's now a hard worker and she does get on well with the other engines. In real life, she is based on the British Rail Class 101 DMU, which actually existed in only two car sets as a minimum and up to four cars as a maximum, so Daisy is quite unrealistic in that sense. But I suppose if she was built specifically for the Farquhar branch line, then it may have been deemed that one car was sufficient and they just designed Daisy as a one car set uh, as a bit of an exception to the rule. So very interesting. Let's take a closer look. 
So there she is, the brand new Backman Daisy, up close and personal for you. And I've got to say, Backman have definitely gone to town on this thing. This thing is clearly creeping towards model and away from toy, I would say. Quite a few very fine parts. I mean, <laughs> I don't know about choking hazard, but yeah, there's certainly a lot of small parts that could possibly come off these little vacuum pipes on the buffer beams. But in terms of from um, accuracy and modeling perspective, all of this stuff is really good. The weight of the model is decent as well at 270 grams, which is only a little bit less than some serious model diesels of this sort of size. It's about seven grams less than the Helgen class 17. So the weight isn't too bad. Obviously a die cast running plate or anything like that wouldn't have been a great idea because there's a good chance kids will be getting a hold of this. So I think the mostly plastic construction on the outside is reasonable. Except for the wheels, of course, which do have to be metal in order to pick up electricity. Having looked at photos of Daisy from the show, both the CGI version and the original model version, I've got to say this is a really, really good model of it. The proportions all look to be really decent, all of the paintwork is good. The quality of the paintwork is sort of toy grade. It's not, I would say, up to Backman's usual standard, but from any sort of distance, I think it does the job. It's not too much of an issue. Here is the face. I think overall the face looks really decent on this. Again, it matches with the images really quite well, except for the colour of the rosy cheeks. I mean, there's a clue in the name there. Rosy? Well, these are not rosy cheeks. These are peachy cheeks, which is not really how Daisy is supposed to look, according to the images. So instead of looking like rosy cheeks, they look like she's got some sort of hideous disease, which is a little bit of a theme with the Backman, Thomas and Friends range. Remember Rosie? <sighs> Horrible chicken pox memories there. But yeah, these, uh, these are weird, these blotches on Daisy's cheeks. They are super weird, to the point where they almost look like countries. I mean, the right cheek, that looks like Africa. The left cheek, Australia. So maybe Daisy's just been on travels around the world and she's decided to get tattoos on her face to remember the different countries by. I don't know, that's my best guess. But yeah, in all seriousness, the face looks pretty decent. And you've got all the little details there, such as the white buffers. Yeah, the buffers are white, as is correct. You've got the little lamp, and what I suppose in real life would be the destination board above the cab there. And on the back, you've got more lamps, three lamps on the back, in fact. Again, very nice, fine-looking pieces. And then you've got the separately painted silver roof with a fair bit of moulded detail on it. Here's a look at the bogey detail. I mean, it's fairly basic, but I would say it checks out, yeah. And here is a look at the underframe detail, which again, seems to look just right, doesn't it? So the whole model looks decent, except for one thing, and that is the interior. There is no interior. The windows are just painted silver, and that goes for the cabs as well. To me, if we're paying a lot of money for this, and this is erring towards a model rather than just a toy, the lack of interior here is a real shame because in a lot of the pictures from the show, you can see the crew inside Daisy. <laughs> <clears throat> you can see the drivers inside Daisy and you can see the interiors a little bit. That's the only part that really looks completely different from the show on this model. Now, it makes sense. I mean, the eye mechanism is quite a big thing. If they did have a visible interior, no doubt that would be ruined by the eye mechanism. But I don't know if it's more realistic to have an eye mechanism and no interior than just a regular static face and a realistic interior. I'm not sure. Comment down below if you've got any thoughts. Anyway, let's wrap up. So handrails, I mean, these don't stand out quite as much as they do in the show because, again, this is going to end up in the hands of kids at some point. So fine, wire handrails is probably not a good idea. But I think these are about as good as you could expect them to look being molded, so no major complaint there. And the only other thing is the couplings. These couplings are not mounted to the bogies, they are mounted to the ends of the model, which means they will swing out quite a long way on curves, won't they? So I'm interested to see how, let's say, a, a wagon with a tension lock coupling will actually interface with Daisy. Will it stay on the track even? The good news is, obviously, as Daisy, she's not going to be hauling that much rolling stock. Maybe she did a little bit in the show. I'm not an expert. But, of course, she has got couplings, so I will want to test them. Anyway, let's move on to that then. Let's get Daisy down onto the track. We will give her a test, see how the performance is. And also, I really want to see what's under the hood. I think this could be a very, very interesting mechanism, and I can't wait to see it for myself. So join me for that. Be right back. 
So there is Daisy down onto the track. And I've got to say, Bankman have done a great job. Visually, this looks great, doesn't it? And I have filmed the performance test already, so I will show you that shortly. Before I do though, I want to go over the mechanism briefly and just show you how this loco actually works. So the mechanism is okay, I think. It's very cleverly designed and it's very interesting to look at, so I hope you'll enjoy that. But it's not the greatest quality in the world, unfortunately. And really I think because this is so expensive and because children are probably going to end up using these models, I don't quite understand that. I think mechanically this ought to have been as high quality and robust as possible in order that it lasts a reasonable amount of time, but that's not really what we've got here. It's not all bad though, I mean the bogies are very good and robust. They are clipped and screwed together, so that's quite a good long lasting solution. But if you remove the base, you can see there are no bearings on the driving wheels, which is a poor quality feature. But then again, on the plus side, I suppose it is simpler for beginners to clean and lubricate for getting hair and bits of carpet out of the mechanism. It does make things a bit easier, but still at this sort of price, proper bearings would have been better. There are, however, pickups on all of the wheels, which should allow good, reliable running. Now, removing the body is very complicated. Well, it's not complicated, it's just long-winded, it's excessive. Eight body screws. Now, usually I would say, yeah, this is ridiculous and over the top. Again, though, because you might want to give this to your children, it's probably a good thing that the body removal is quite tricky because you don't want it to come off accidentally and you want it to be nice and secure for while the loco is being played with, so that's okay. So here is the chassis, very, very unusual chassis. This big box here is the eye mechanism, and this piece at the front here is what makes the eyes look left and right. If you remove the body for any reason like I did, you will want to remove the face. Yes, apologies for the nightmares this will cause, uh, because it's much easier to re-engage the eye mechanism uh, by putting the face back on last. Here is what I think is a five pole motor, three or five pole, it's certainly a very substantial motor, very nice and large. But here is the flywheel. <laughs> now the instructions showed a gigantic flywheel and there's plenty of space for a big flywheel, but for some reason they've cheaped out and just put this pathetic little one in there. So that's unfortunate. Again, at this price, I don't expect to see cheaping out of any kind, really. So that's unfortunate. And also on that note, here is the circuit board and there is no DCC socket on there of any kind. Again, that makes no sense. At this sort of price, this could have had a DCC socket on there. It's not an expensive thing to include. A lot of people use DCC. And in fact, I think in the United States, most people use DCC. So by not including a socket on this loco, back have made it very difficult to get this loco DCC fitted and unnecessarily so that's a great pity and then finally on the inside we have the gear train which is just connected by a shaft to the front of that puny flywheel and there is a little bearing on there too so it's fairly good quality the gauging is 14.2 millimeters on the driving wheels and 14.3 millimeters on the non-driving wheels I'm not sure why there's a slight difference there but it is only very slight so it shouldn't matter so it's slightly disappointing mechanism I think for the money it could have been better but I suppose at least it is quite well designed so with that I'm gonna move on and show you the performance test it is the moment of truth then Daisy's first ever test and I'm really really interested to see how well this works don't forget at this point I haven't seen the insides yet like you have so this really will be fascinating for me I think right forwards are you ready Daisy it is your Daisy debut here we go giving it some juice Sorry, her. Ooh, all right. Well, that was quite a smooth start, wasn't it? And I do tend to find that, to be honest, with the Backman Thomas and Friends models. They do tend to be good smooth runners, and I'm pretty sure quite a few of them are good crawlers as well. Now, are the eyes working? Yes, they are. So I'll, I'll pop Daisy onto the rolling road, I think, and that way she keeps still so that I can get a good shot of her eyes moving for you. As you can see, nice smooth motion left and right, not too fast. I think some other brands of moving eyed Thomas models, the eyes sort of dart left and right really violently and it doesn't look right. These are nice and subtle, which is good. All right, so she hasn't been running yet and the instructions did specifically say these engines will run better after a few hours running, but straight out of the box, how is the performance at the slow speed? Let's give her some juice, see if we can crawl. I'm turning it up, turning it up. There we go, inching forwards. 
So definitely quite a bit of cogging there, but you've got to say that is very, very slow and controlled. And because it's got all-wheel pickups, I mean, I do know that at this point because I've seen them, it's not cutting out or anything. It seems to be very, very reliable. Sorry, I keep saying it. I'm just too used to that. Sorry, Daisy. She. Yes, she's very reliable. Not cutting out at all at the moment, which is great. Okay, very good. So the performance seems just as you'd want it, really. Very, very good and smooth. Nice and controlled as well. So let's set her off at 50% speed and let's get this loco run in. Here we go. Daisy's off. And that is 50% speed, so half speed. And I think that's quite sensible. I will show you how fast she can go in just a second, but yeah, I think that seems fairly realistic. It might be that she speeds up having been running, that might be true, and then maybe it will be a little too fast. But I would say the speed is good to the point where the slow speed performance is excellent. And at half speed, as you can see, very nice and smooth and quite realistic looking. So performance is looking really good. I'm still yet to test coupling anything up to Daisy, and I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll try all that later on after the running in. Always better to let a loco like this run in without a load. So that's what I'll do. And when that's done, I'll come back. Okay, folks, that is running in complete. And yeah, she's pretty good. Uh, good performance, no problems at all. No derailments, no cutting out. Nice and smooth all the way along, no problems at all. So that's really great. The pulling power is okay, 0.34 newtons, which should translate to around 22 coaches. That is weaker than most diesels that I've got, but you have to think, what is this designed for? I have never seen Daisy in the show hauling trucks and coaches. It might be that occasionally she did that, but I think for the most part, Daisy ran on her own. Of course, though, this loco has got couplings and, you know, at home, you're not forced to just recreate realistic things from the show. So you might want to couple this and that up to Daisy. And so just to test that, I've set up a small number of wagons. The front one there is a Backman wagon. So we'll just see how she gets on. Pulling power, though, should be OK to haul, you know, uh, one or two coaches or wagons here and there. So I don't think that's much of a problem. So let's have a look what the performance is like now that she's fully run in. Good and smooth, I have to say. Might still be cogging at the low speed, but this is great, isn't it, at this sort of speed? Yeah, really nice. It's a big substantial motor, though, isn't it? So there's going to be plenty of torque there. But right, let's test that. Let's set it up to about 50 and just stop her. Yeah, look at that. Wheels spinning, loads of power there. So, yeah, I'm quite impressed with the quality of the motor and the power that the Loco's got. Plenty of torque there. Quite a lot better, I would say, than some of the other Backman Thomas models. Yeah, this has got a much bigger motor than I think all of the Steam Locos have. And uh, if it is five pole, then uh, that's an improvement over them as well. So that's great. Anyway, let's go and couple to my wagons. So remember, the couplings on Daisy cannot pivot, which means if you're coupling her to other rolling stock that also doesn't have pivoting couplings, or perhaps longer rolling stock that doesn't have pivoting couplings, I think you're going to see some derailments, and I can try that uh, later on. But for now, let's just make sure these have engaged correctly. And let's see how she gets on with the short wheelbase wagons. This is probably about similar to the, the length of a Backman Thomas & Friends wagon. So let's see how this goes. Okay, a bit slower this time at 40. So with something short like that, second radius curves, no derailments. Let's try something longer. Okay, so this time I've added a long wheelbase baggage van. Aha, uh -huh. we've got a derailment there, but I think it was on the wagon. Okay, <laughs> so it's possibly the van's fault that. Let's try something else. Right, so this time I've got Henrietta coupled up to Daisy, which does have Backman couplings, uh, but it's a little bit shorter. But yeah, that's not a problem. So as long as you're not coupling her to anything that's too long and it's got vastly different couplings, which are unpivoted, I don't think that's going to be a problem. So that's good. All right, so I thought for the running session, I would run some other diesels from the Backman Thomas and Friends range. So on the middle line here, I've got Mavis who is fixed now, by the way. Well, she's stuttering on the points, but yeah, she is working as far as I know. There we go. But there are lots of other engines in the sidings, including one that is duplicated. So if you can spot which one that is and comment it down below, I will pin the first correct answer. 
And then on the inside line, let's all get a boo for Ari and Bert. No, forwards Ari and Bert. Now, one of them, I think it's Bert, is actually broken. The motors are really rubbish in these. Uh, very underpowered motors for the size of the Locos. Uh, so, yeah, one of them is literally just freewheeling. Is it the one at the back? Yeah, it's the one at the back, look. So it's just being pulled along by Ari. But if I run them together, it kind of looks like they're both working. And they've got some sort of scrap wagons. So let's see how they get on. And yeah, see who else you can spot in these sidings. You might already be able to see one in the background. So I really think this is pretty good. Yes, it's quite expensive, but I suppose it could have been worse. And yes, the mechanism isn't the greatest in the world, but I think in terms of looks, she is pretty much spot on. And you cannot fault the performance at all, can you? I mean, it's just a really, really great runner. So overall, I mean, if Daisy is your favorite character and you've got $100 or whatever it is you can find this for to spare, it, you could do worse. You could do worse. It is better quality, I think, than quite a lot of the other Backman Thomas and Friends models, if nothing else but for the higher quality motor. That seems to make a huge difference. And um, I've got quite a few Backman diesels that have this sort of motor in them, and they do seem to last a lot longer than the motors in their steam locos. So, I mean, it's expensive, but most of the Backman Thomas and Friends range is. But at least this time when you spend that kind of money, you're getting a loco that stands a chance of lasting a long while. And the same can't be said for a lot of the range. I have known quite a lot of their characters burn out prematurely, and a couple of mine are like that actually too. Yeah, I do have one or two dead ones, as you saw with Ari and Bert. And my Emily is totally dead as well. But no, I reckon this one will last, and that's good news. It's very good. Let's have some ratings then for Backman's brand new Daisy model. Now the level of detail, of course this is not a super detailed locomotive in the traditional sense. It's based on a character which is outwardly quite simple and it's also designed for youngsters so safety has obviously had to be considered in the making of this loco and taking all of that into account I think Backman have done a great job. Looking at photos and videos of Daisy from the show and then comparing them to this model it looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? Very, very good representation from Backman. I think the only major issue is the interior, complete lack of interior. I think that's unfortunate, and that's the only thing that really stood out to me as a glaring error. So I've knocked off one star for that. Overall, though, I think this is a really good effort from Backman. Similarly, the performance was fantastic. I've given it four and a half stars. Really nice and smooth, good range of speeds, and the crawl is great as well. It does cog a little bit at the low speed, and of course, to most people buying this, that won't matter at all, but I've got to be consistent. I would normally knock a loco down a little bit for that sort of cogging, so I've done that again here. Perhaps if there was a decent sized flywheel fitted, as shown in the diagram, that might not be the case, but it is the case, so I've knocked off half a star. Pulling power then, 22 coaches or 0.34 newtons, much more than this loco needs and the weight is good as well, so no problems at all there. The mechanism though, I've given two star. Now, there are some good aspects to it. I mean, it's well screwed together, so it's not just gonna fall apart on you. No clips being relied on to hold parts together because that would suck. And it does have all wheel pickup for maximum reliability and it's got a good motor as well but no proper bearings on the driving wheels. It's got only half of its wheels driven. I mean, that's a little bit old fashioned, but it, it kind of makes sense as to why that's being done. Uh, it's got no DCC socket, no good reason for that as far as I'm concerned. And that puny little flywheel, which is only good for entertainment value as far as I'm concerned, because it sure isn't gonna do much to help the Locos performance. Value for money then, loads and loads of different prices for this. $163 is the RRP. Fortunately, very few retailers seem to be selling at that price. Tootley Thomas sold me mine for £90 or $118, or it's available for around $100 from Trainworld in the US. So, you know, it's not a bargain or anything, and I do think that is very expensive for pocket money people, <laughs> you know what I mean? but it could be worse, I suppose. So I've only given it three star. It's not amazing value for money, but it is quite a complex thing, at least mechanically. And so, yeah, value for money, it is what it is, I think. So that's 7.09 out of 10. Let's put that into the ranking. There it is, ninth place above the Hornby Ruston and below the Backman 812. Overall, no major complaints. A pretty good effort from Backman that works very well too. Here's full speed for you. Slightly terrifying, but I know some people care about this, so yeah, she can do that too. 
So there we go then folks, that was my review of the brand new Backman Daisy. Do comment down below, let me know what you think about this. Have you got one of these? What do you think about yours? If so, do you like it? Do you not? Do you think it's better than the other Backman Thomas & Friends locomotives? I think so. I think it's possibly slightly more realistic than the other models in their range. Bear in mind I'm saying that as a non-Thomas & Friends expert. There might be others that disagree, but if you do, let me know in the comments. And performance, I think, is definitely quite a bit stronger than uh, quite a few of the other items in their range. I think mechanically it's gone downhill a little bit. I think the Backman Rosie, I think that has a higher quality mechanism than this, but generally speaking it is better than a lot of the other models in the range in terms of performance and mechanism. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I think for the money I paid it's not too bad. It is a shame that it's so expensive because that places it out of reach of quite a lot of youngsters, people that would enjoy it. But I suppose it's not absolutely ridiculous like quite a few models these days are. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching and I will see you very soon with some more videos. All right, cheers, everybody.